Hello, I'm Greg Inji Idra Fields, and this is a replay review brought to you by EvilGeniuses.net. Uh, here we'll be looking at a game of me versus Dignitas Select on the North American ladder on the map Cloud Kingdom. Okay, we're, here we have Select as the Red Terran in the bottom left, and me as the Blue Zerg in the top right. And this is a very long macro game. And no particular points to look at, it's just a very good game, and we'll see a lot of different late game management. Uh, different tactics going on, uh, just kind of how to deal with late game situations, ZBD, particularly against a smart and somewhat non-standard opponent like Select. A lot of a lot of Terrans right now have been going for very heavy aggression to deal with the fact that they're uncomfortable playing against Hive Tech without, without Ghosts. A lot of Terrans became very, very dependent on Ghost play in the last patch because it was just so incredibly efficient versus, uh, versus pretty much everything Cirque has. However, with the Ghost nerf, they kind of lost that crutch and late game situations have become very uncomfortable for a lot of Terrans, so uh, the, a lot of them, particularly Polt, but pretty much everyone at this point, as soon as they see Broodlords or any kind of hype tech, they just load up their army in four or five medivacs and run around dropping. Select, however, has a different approach to it. He kind of still just plays defensively, he takes bases, and plays a very standard, uh, like he just continues from the mid game into the late game, he gets better upgrades and he mixes Vikings into his composition, but otherwise continues to play standardly. And against someone with mechanics as good as him, that's actually pretty uncomfortable play verse. As long as you pick your engagements well, you don't fight on creep, you don't fight into a defensive zerg, you can still fight pretty efficiently against that hive tech army. So we'll see how to deal with that. And most importantly, we'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of unit movement, how important that is, how important picking your engagements is, um, which is something that can be pretty uncomfortable as Zerg, a lot of Zergs are most comfortable just sitting back and playing defensively. So when you'll play against a Terran who refuses to attack, who won't let you do that, then um, it becomes uh, much, much more difficult to try and deal with fighting out in the open ground. And uh, here, this was, this is an opening that I've been using pretty frequently. It's a 15 hatchery into 16 pool without scouting, and then you save up larva and make eight links regardless. This allows you to hold off any kind of two racks, and if you catch a Terran being greedy like this, uh, putting down three command centers and going reactor Hellion off, one or two marines, it gives you the potential to punish them, get some scouting information, kill a few SCV kills. So kind of a nice little opening that I actually copied off of Coco. And then behind that, I'm just going for the regular four queen opening, mass drones. I know I'm safe, so I'm just making pure drones as I saw everything that's in his base. I know he has no, no potential to really attack me before this little Hellion harass, which is relatively easy dealt with with this number of queens. And then from here, we both go into standard macro openings. He has that third orbital, so he'll be able to compensate a little bit but we see already pretty solid economic advantage for me. He's not going to have any kind of income until he gets that third orbital up with the mules to compensate. Third hatchery going down, double gas on the way. Allow me to head up towards my upgrades um, and head towards the investor tech that's so important in ZBT right now. Putting down that spine crawler as soon as I see the first Hellion, as I know a couple more could be on the way. Once you have four Hellions out, you want to have that, that spine crawler to help deal with them. Uh, no more Hellion production. He is just going to go ahead and put, get his economy up. Select a uh, very mechanical Terran. He's not going to really do crazy off-the-ball stuff. He just does very basic strategies, and he does them very, very well. He's one of the fastest players in the game, and has been since very early on. Executes very, very well. Uh, but, however, I know that. I know he's not likely to do any crazy off-the-wall attacks, so I'm sitting back and just building up a ton of drones. Very minimal defenses. I know that I'm pretty safe. Also, having this great creep spread, that's another, another benefit of that early aggression, kind of keeping him in his base, hold off his attacks for a while, allow myself to start getting that creep spread up. And once you have creep spread down two different paths, it becomes much, much uh, easier to continue to expand it, as he can't have Hellions from both places. He only has Hellions over here or over here. So I can just put down creep in both directions. He can stop it over here. He could have gone in and got those tumors. Uh, he just chose not to. He didn't see them. But there's no way he could have held these off. So uh, just continuing to spread creep down wherever possible. With those two additional early queens, I have more than enough mana. I, I don't really care if he goes ahead and kills these. I'll just continue to re, re, replant tumors, and eventually he won't be able to keep up with them. Back in select space, uh, just building up normally. Uh, early, very, very early tanks, which is uh, pretty smart. It makes you absolutely safe for any kind of roach aggression, which has become much more popular recently. Also, once you have a siege tank up in this area, any kind of Zergling counters are going to be absolutely ineffective. Siege Shank, very, very good against, uh, against Zerglings, obviously. Plus, on this map, with this ledge over the third base, uh, Siege Shank's very, very effective there. You put a tank up there, and this base is pretty much invulnerable to any kind of aggression. And here, I see that early tank. 
And that's, that's, the, uh, that's the flip side of this. The tanks, very, very slow, and they become much, much more powerful as you get more and more of them. Their power grows exponentially. So when I see tanks like that, I know that it's not going to be good for him to attack for a very, very long time. I know he's not really going to want to do a two-base timing or any kind of very early two-base timing with those tanks. So I'm free to go ahead and put down my third base to tech up, get all my upgrades, get infestors, get burrow. I just I know that I'm going to be pretty safe for a while, particularly given the fact that I already had this massive circling up. So I'm just going to head, go ahead and move out, get map control, start spreading my creep, get my third base up, and just do everything except worry about defending an attack, which is a great position to be in as third. Continuing to produce drones, starting to prepare to saturate this base as soon as that hatchery finishes. Uh, pathogen upgrades, uh, pathogen gland upgrade immediately for my, uh, for my investors. And see, uh, here we see that he's just putting up that bunker. He's still in a very, very defensive posture, trying to build up his infrastructure, focusing on upgrades. That's very, very smart by him. Uh, given the current trend of investor play, the very, very upgrade focused Zerg play, Terran um, has been moving more and more towards this double, engine bay, double engineering bay with a quick early armory. Uh, to kind of keep up with Zerg in upgrades, if not surpass them. And that's a very, very smart style from Terran. However, that's a lot of resources invested. That means that he's not going to be able to attack me for a long, long time. So if you recognize that that's how your opponent is playing as Zerg, you know that you're very safe. You know you can just sit back and make drones, go for hive tech very, very quickly. Um, and here we see finally moving out and taking that base. I have that Zergling here spotting. Very important to keep an eye on all potential bases. Terrans, a lot of them will just put down an orbital at a random base as an annoying little tactic. Uh, mine from it for as long as possible, potentially just with mules. And then if you see it, they'll lift off the orbital and bring it back to their main base. And there's not really too much you can do about it. So you just have to be proactive about scouting. Um, obviously, the third base, you know that Terran's going to be taking that eventually. Very important to know when they take it. So always having a circling scout at the third base, if nothing else. And here, as I said, spreading out and checking the other bases as well. That's a great uh, part about having burrow. Uh, it, if you burrow that there, then obviously it costs them a scan to take that base. It also gives you free scouting information. Uh, if he tries to fly out any medivacs over here, I'll see it. Um, Zerking at every base, burrowing them all. And here, very smart by him, getting that building wall up. Uh, building wall is absolutely crucial versus linking faster play, as counterattacks are so crucial. My hive on the way, fourth base coming up. Knowing that he's in a very defensive posture, having taken that base uh, late and shown no signs of aggression, I know I'm very comfortable. Creep spread on the way out. We see that I've creeped pretty much across the entire map. A very, very powerful tactic. I can just be anywhere almost immediately with Zerglings on creep. They're so incredibly fast. Um, something that a lot of Zergs have, have realized how important creep is, yeah, but still something that you absolutely have to focus on and something that a lot of beginner Zergs don't really pay enough attention to. It's one of the most important parts of the game for a Zerg player, um, particularly with Ling and Fester. If Terran actually just goes out and sits on creep, um, they'll get surrounded by Zerglings uh, very, very quickly and it's much, much more efficient in the fight than you would be without creep. So what this forces Terran to do is to scan, kill off the tumors, and then move up and scan and kill off the rest of the tumors and wait for the creep to dissipate and scan and keep moving up. So it slows them, um, it slows down their attack a lot. It gives you a lot more time to get up to your hive tech, which is what's really going to be able to crush the push in any circumstances. You can see my greater spire on the way, all the 3-3 three, three, three upgrades as well. This pack of Zerglings down here is waiting to counterattack. I know that eventually he's going to have to push out. He's going to have to put some pressure on me before I get up to 4 base hive tech, as Zerg at that point is very, very powerful. Um, and Terran just doesn't want to deal with that situation. So I know he's going to have to move out. I know this base is very vulnerable. That's just one of the features of the map Cloud Kingdom. There's a lot of different angles from attack. It's hard to wall everything off. So I have these Zerglings. And as soon as I see him move out, I send them in, focus down the command center, send some SCVs in here to get the, or send some Zerglings in here to get the SCVs. Take advantage of that tank splash. We see all of his SCVs were in the red. I wasn't quite able to kill off a lot of them, but I did kill that command center without him canceling it. So pretty nice for me. Yeah, obviously a big mineral investment loss for him, but it also delays his fourth base, which is very important. However, this is a very good timing attack by him. My Greater Spire is just now about to finish as his attack moves out. Uh, as Terran, you're aiming to attack before Hive Tech kicks in versus the Zerg. That's, that's when Zerg is most vulnerable. I realize this. I realize that he has a good attack timing, and that's going to be very hard for me to hold this off. 
So I run away all my excess drones, just leave a handful there to get the gas mining out of it. Gas is your most important resource right now. It's worthwhile to lose six drones to get that additional gas income for a while, and then start moving into brood hordes, brood lords. I just accept, accept that I'm going to lose that base because he's hit the proper timing. I, um, he just he found when I was vulnerable and he took advantage of it. So instead of wasting a bunch of resources and units trying to trying to save this, I just accept the minimal loss of the hatchery and a few drones, and then I go ahead and re-expand here and here. Um, and that's the great part of this, this situation is there, I have a ton of minerals because all of my important units, the broodlords, the infestors, the ultras, they're gas heavy. So I start to build up a ton of minerals and I can just expand all over the map. And I know that my army is more mobile than his with this Ling Infestor. I know that I can expand more than he can afford to actually run around and kill. So eventually one of these bases will get up and then I'll have the income I need to really overwhelm him. And here we can see, as I said, he's not really switching to a late game hive tech or late game high tech army. He's not adding in ravens or ghosts or anything. He's just getting the three three upgrades, keeping his army very mobile, which is very important. You can't be set up in a siege position against broodlords. Otherwise, broodlords come in and destroy you. So he's keeping his army mobile. He's moving around. He's trying to pick good angles of attack. Whereas at the same time, I'm trying to move around, figure out where he is, figure out where it's best to engage. Um, and here, kind of annoying, uh, his Thor is catching my Broodlords, which is a little bit of a mistake by me. I want to come in and try and attack from up here, um, not get caught out, out of position like this. That was a really, really nice move by him. Like I said, keeping mobile, not getting stuck in a defensive position, and it allowed him to get in, go in there and get four or five Broodlord kills for free. And that's really what you're trying to do uh, at this point as Terran. Because Zerg has the stronger army. If we fight straight up with this versus my Broodlord and Festerling, I'll win. However, if he catches me out of position like that, he gets a couple of free Broodlord kills while dropping up here, and all of a sudden I start to fall apart because my Broodlords are just so slow, and Ling and Fester can't fight versus sufficiently. So there is, this is kind of how Select deals with this situation that a lot of Terrans really dislike right now. Uh, fighting against Broodlord and Fester is very difficult. So instead of actually fighting against it, he just runs around all over the map and tries to, tries to distract me, tries to catch me out of position. And as Zerg, it's your job to just not allow that to happen. I'll keep, your, keep your calm composure, catch any, any attacks off, or deal with any attacks as they happen and wear out while keeping your main army together and waiting for that good engagement. Here, I caught him out of position. I caught him with fungals from the high ground when he wasn't ready to deal with it. Most of his tanks were at siege. And so now I'm getting the really, really efficient fight that every Zerg looks for. Got a ton of tank kills, I got a Thor kill, I limited his marine count, and I maintained my, my gas heavy units. It's okay to throw away those Zerglings, those are relatively unimportant. They don't do a ton of damage and I have a big mineral bank anyway, I can resupply them very quickly. You can see I have 36 more Zerglings on the way without even touching my mineral bank. It's the Broodlords and Infestors that are very important, and I kept pretty much all of them alive in that attack, and I didn't even expend too much Infestor mana. So that was really, really good for me. Also, at the same time, I stabilized at home. Uh, if you can manage to put pressure on the Terran, that's really, really good, because it's very hard for him to go around and drop my bases and keep tabs on my income while he's also trying to keep himself alive. So if you're having trouble dealing with drops, if you don't like playing defensively, then it's very good to get into your opponent's face and actually force them to focus on being defensive themselves instead of, instead of putting pressure on you and attack. So here we can see coming in, attacking him again, trying to take out this fourth base. That fourth base is absolutely crucial to, to the Terran player. That's what allows you to start getting uh, just massive production and kind of to fight against the Zerg on an equal footing. Again, that, that Burrow Zergling delaying his base, giving me scouting information. I know this is here. This immediately sends Zergling over to, to prevent him from taking that base. At the same time, taking down this planetary and fighting against his army. Uh, so really now I've kind of got the Terran on the back foot. However, at the same time, he is being very conscious of my expansions. He knows that he has to keep pressure on me. Uh, Terran, if, if they just sit back and play wholly defensively, if they allow Zerg to take a massive economy, and things don't go very well for them at all. So a really smart play by him. Unfortunately, I ran out of Infestor mana uh, as those Vikings were about to die. So he is going to manage to hold this off, while at the same time harassing one base is taking this, um, killing off this hatchery, putting a bunch of pressure on here, I uh, took out this hatchery as well. So select, I was able to put a lot of pressure on him. I was able to fight really efficiently in this area and take out that expansion. However, he's reacting very well, putting the pressure back on me, uh, managing, managing to establish his base, get a planetary up there. Um, and this is really, really good for him because that planetary means that I have to commit a significant portion of my army to it, to killing it off. I can't just send Zerglings at it. 
But if I send Brutalord and Fester over to this side of the map, then I'm going to lose both of these expansions because if he gets his army into this area, he can goes, go ahead and kill both of them uh, very, very quickly. So getting that base up was absolutely crucial to, his, to, um, to, to the game for him. Also trying to put down this base. He knows that our armies are going to be focused in this area, so putting down this expansion is um, intelligent, but a little bit dangerous for him. He knows his army is going to be here. He knows he's going to be able to try and defend it. However, army versus army fights are very difficult for the Terran player at this point in the game because uh, Zerg just has the better army. You have slow, but very, very powerful units. Moving into this area, uh, trying to get a good angle again, this kind of bottleneck here. However, he attacks Unsiege, which means my investors are very powerful, able to go in and fungal him. He just can't target down those, uh, can't target down those investors because his tanks are in siege. Unfortunately, I run out of investor mana, which means I'm not able to fungal his marines or the rest of the Vikings. He's actually able to get in here and fight much more efficiently than I expected and take out a lot of these broodlords. SCVs being in here on auto repair is actually quite helpful. It keeps these tanks alive, keeps the Viking alive, and um, allowed him to to fight much better in that battle than you would have expected. Also at the same time, a drop going on, take, uh, doing some damage to me, that's, very, that's probably the most important part of the way that he's playing this, is you always have to be putting, um, dropping your opponent, putting pressure on them, as well as fighting the main battle, because eventually Zerg will win the main battle. It just takes one good fungal, or one good Broodlord engagement, and uh, they can absolutely crush the main battle. But as long as you're continuing to drop, continuing to take out that gas income of the Zerg, uh, you always have a chance anyway. And here we can see uh, the big 3-3 tearing army coming in. That is the, the weakness of, of the Broodlord, the hive tech army for the Zerg. You resupply very, very slowly because Broodlords, first you have to make a handful of corruptors and then you have to morph them into Broodlords. It takes a really long time before that Broodlord army is ready to go again if you have to replace it. Uh, so he recognized that and he moved in here even with a relatively small Biothor tank army and put a ton of pressure on that hatchery and he's actually going to go ahead and get that hatchery killed here with the remainder of units because like I said um, I just don't have time to morph these corruptors into broodlords because he's constantly attacking. Recognizing this I switched to mostly Zerg and Infestor production. I know that I have a pretty big economic lead right now. He only has this base which is pretty um, he, he doesn't want to transfer SCVs over here in case I actually do commit to attacking it, so he's just using an or his orbitals on this base, and I know that he has no income here and that this base is starting to mine out. So I know that I, I do have a bigger army than him, I do have a bigger income than him, I just have to be careful about how fragile my units are and how, uh, how easy it is for him to get a good engagement and actually go ahead and go in and take out that hatchery. So I'm switching to mostly Ling and Fester production, as that gets me units out on the field faster. He gives me something to work with instead of just waiting for these broodlords to morph and hoping that, uh, hoping that he doesn't manage to do damage to me in time. Also, I had a very big gas bank, and Infestor's obviously your most gas-heavy units in the game, so good way to take advantage of that. Having a ton of Infestor's is also very, very powerful. Once you get up to a very large Infestor count, you can essentially just bungle everything forever, which is uh, a great position to be in as a Zerg if you can afford it. Usually you can't. However, this game he's done a great job of keeping my drone count low and preventing me from having a ton of mineral income. However, I have been able to secure my gases for the most part, so I had a lot of excess gas, which is an unusual, unusual situation. So we can see I now have a pretty big, actually a very big investor count built up. Zergling's on the way. Even though he's not going to take this space, uh, he, can, he can't really afford to. Very important to kill off those Marines, chase them away, so that he doesn't know whether or not I have this base. Denying scouting is very important. It makes your opponent uncomfortable, and it gives them more things that they have to think about and deal with. Now that I have this investor count up, um, I'm starting to secure this base. I have secured this base. I've gotten myself into a really good position. He was putting a ton of pressure on me down in this area for a long time, and it was going really well for him. However, the problem was behind that, he didn't secure much of an economy. He never got this base fully up and running, which means that once I was able to kind of weather the storm and get a standing army up, uh, the game switched into my favor really, really quickly. He, uh, as long as you're able to apply that pressure as Terran, it's great. However, you have to make sure that you maintain your economy behind it so you can continue the pressure. If you ever let Zerg sit back and mass up, you're in a lot of trouble. That is the downside of the style Select is playing and what you have to keep in mind as a Zerg. You know that he's not making a ton of Vikings, he's not making a ton of Ravens, not making a ton of Ghosts, not even really upgrading his mech. He's only getting the armor or the weapon upgrades, he's not getting armor, and he's getting zero upgrades for air. So if you ever do manage to get up this Death Ball army, if you get a lot of Infestors, a lot of Broodlords, then you're going to be in great shape. 
So it's just kind of, you fight a battle um, to, to keep yourself alive until you get to this point. You don't have to really be winning. You just have to be not dying because your opponent isn't, isn't playing for the super late game. He's not going to be very efficient versus you as long as you can keep yourself alive for long enough to get this army up. And I, I've gotten to that position now where I do have this army. There's no way he can really fight versus that. I just have so many fungals and infested, infested terrans. And then there's not too much you can do about it. Uh, go ahead and taking this expansion. That seems kind of cheeky. Generally, as Zerg, you don't expand towards Terran. However, in this situation, I know because I have Broodlords, his siege tanks aren't particularly powerful. He can't really siege me. Um, positional control isn't really in his favor like it usually is for the Terran. Plus, with this many investors, I, just, I have the better army. I can win if we fight. So expanding towards him is perfectly fine, um, even though that's not usually the case. And here, he realizes that my army is just getting stronger and stronger, and he kind of has to push the issue. Uh, Broodlord and Fester control, very, very important. You use the Broodlords to bait his units out of position, um, bait them outside of the tank range, or take advantage of the tank's uh, splash damage. And then once they go in and try to engage, you just can blanket everything in Fungal. Here we can see he has enough medivacs and he has the 3-3 upgrades. That Fungal isn't super efficient, um, but more than enough. Given, given my better income, better economy, I know I can resupply much more quickly than he can. Plus, I still have a ton of Infestor mana. I can just continue to Fungal him. And at this point, I realize that I'm kind of losing my Broodlord count, so I'm going to go ahead and throw in a bunch of Infested Terrans as well. Yes, get that ab added damage and uh, added, added damage absorption. Plus, given that I still already have the Fungals, uh, I can take advantage of... I, I, it's not such a big, a big problem that my Infested Terrans aren't very mobile, as I can just hold them in place. And there we actually saw the Infested Terrans take down a couple of Thors. And that's the power of having so many Infestors. There's just so much you can do with them. You can cast Infested Terrans, you can cast Neural Parasite, you can Fungal everything. And at the same time as taking out this base, however, it was already pretty much mined out. I already have this base and this base running with uh, more than full saturation. I, I won that battle pretty easily. He has a few remaining units, however, if we look at my, my resupply, I have four Broodlords on the way, I have a bunch of Zerglings and Infestors, and I still have a pretty good uh, existing, uh, existing economy plus my income. It is much, much higher than his. This base is completely mined out. This will mine out very quickly. And then he'll be left with no income, no way to really do anything at all. Knowing that, I kind of sit back and play more defensively. I know that the only way he can win right now is to just absolutely destroy my army and then run in and kill both these bases. I know he, has, he can't win a war of attrition at all, so there's no point in being aggressive and risking losing that decisive battle. Knowing that, he's going to move out and try and take this expansion again. Seeing that is going to be my cue to go back on the aggressive. I know that I can't let him get that base up. A Terran, even with one base at this point in the game, can produce a ton of units. And their units in the proper situation can be so efficient that it's, it's risky to let him have that expansion, even though I still have more expansions. I have another base on the way. I have a better army. I have more income. It's still kind of iffy to let him take that. So once I see that he is moving out to take this expansion, I'm going to go ahead and start putting more pressure on him. And he realizes this moves his army around. He knows he's, he's not supposed to win a straight-up battle, so he's going to go ahead and try and run around and avoid fighting me and go for this expansion. However, I saw it on the way. Uh, I got a really huge fungal off on those Vikings and the Medivacs, and the Zerglings come to surround. And given that this is his only real income right now, he's not going to be able to replace that. That's pretty much the decisive battle right there. We see the supply count in the game's, uh, game's pretty much over at this point. He's, he's hanging in there, but it doesn't really matter. Too many Festers, Broodlords, uh, 40 Zerglings on the way. At this point, there's not too much he can do. So given that, I'm going to go ahead and push him for the kill. I know that at this point it's not really dangerous. I just I have too much stuff. There's not, not a whole lot he can do. He is sitting back, building up whatever units he can for a final attack. But we see he has almost no income right now. Uh, he just he can't make any more units at all. The last command center goes down. Running around trying to drop, taking out this base. But still, these two bases running at full saturation and be able to clear this up pretty easily. I go back to clean this up, given that there's nothing else to actually kill down in this area. And generally, it'd be okay to just sacrifice this base and keep pushing the, pushing the aggression. However, like I said, there's, there's no point in being aggressive with this when there's nothing of value there. So go ahead and clean this up and then go back in for the kill. Moving out again. Um, to just try and put some pressure on this base or something. However, I already have these spine crawlers here as well. It will buy me a lot of time. Uh, static defense, very, very important in late game ZBT. 
Uh, the Broodlords sacrifice your army mobility uh, in return for army strength. However, without uh, mobility, very hard to go around and defend bases. They're a huge money funder um, on pretty much all of the Marines he has left in the world. You see he has zero income, so losing that army means he has absolutely nothing to work with trying to establish this base. But again, that Zergling there uh, kind of puts an end to that and select GG's. This has been an EG Replay Review brought to you by EvilGeniuses.net. Uh, go check out more of our great content there if you enjoyed this. Thank you for watching.